Welcome to The One Inside, an internal family systems podcast. I'm your host, Tammy Sollenberger. I'm excited that you and all of your parts have taken time to be with me and all of my parts. If you are a coach, a client, a therapist, if you are in business or education, and you're curious about the IFS model, you are in the right place. Now, let's see what happens on today's podcast. Hey everyone, as promised, this is the second part of my chat with Michelle Glass, which includes about a 10 minute meditation for connecting with your parts. It occurs in the first few minutes of the podcast, so if you want to listen to just that section over and over, I think you'll have easy access to it. I would say it probably starts about two minutes in. Of course, you want to give the whole episode a listen to hear more about the meditation. Michelle also gives some interesting information about what is happening in the foundation. They are thinking outside the therapy office to get IFS into the hearts and minds of the world. Yeah, that is right. Why not shoot to help the whole world rethink the way we all think about ourselves and other people? Lastly, Michelle talks about what's coming up for her. She's doing some intros to IFS in Eugene, Oregon. So if you're around that area, or if, even if you're a couple hours away, I highly recommend you get to her. She's also doing a workshop at the IFS annual conference. It's happening in September. And she has a really incredible retreat where she spends time leading you through all of her cool tools and you'll have time to spend time with your parts. And um, it's in November and it's somewhere amazing. So um, check that out too. One more thing before we meditate together, Michelle and I really want you to be reminded of the benefits of the daily meditation practice process. So you can hear them throughout both of these podcasts, but just wanted to highlight them. One thing it does is it increases therapist effectiveness, helps us all be more self-led. It strengthens coherent narratives. It deepens integration. It lessens the chance of you accruing new burdens. It deepens internal relationships, deepens the relationships between your parts, and therefore deepens external relationships. Michelle says, As what happens within is also what happens without. As within, so without. It gives a microscopic and macroscopic views of one system. And it augments spiritual awakening no matter what spiritual path you follow. And I do want to give you a heads up. The next podcast that we do, we're going to dance. Enjoy this one. I'll talk to you soon. Well, let's talk about that daily meditation practice then. Yeah, great. You know, I don't know. Do you think we'll have time for a, to do the meditation? It's about an eight-minute meditation. Yeah. Yeah? We can do whatever we want to do. That's what I think. <laughs> great, Tammy. I like that idea. <laughs> what I like to do in my workshops and retreats is to do the meditation first and talk about it later. Let's do it. That I way that people idea. Can, can have a conceptualization afterwards. Let's do it. Okay. And this one is geared mostly to connect with a part that's already unburdened. So I'm going to invite you. Are you going to do the meditation? Of course. Okay. I'll invite you and the listeners before you even go inside just to either think about or um, listen in for a part that wants to connect with you at some point during this meditation. And preferably choose a part that is already unburdened. That's already gone through an unburdening. And then when you have that part, just let them know that you're going to be with them in a minute. So I'll just invite you all to Just get comfortable, whether it's on the floor or on a chair, wherever you're at. And you might close your eyes or soften your gaze. 
And just take a few slow, deep breaths if it helps you to become more present. And just notice who's active right now inside and witness them for a moment. Just seeing who's all here and what they're thinking or doing or wanting of you. And now I'll invite you to invite all of your parts to gather around now, and both parts that are known and unknown. And just let them be near you or around you. And with them there now, just ask them all to separate from you for just a little bit. They'll still be near you. Just maybe take a step or two back so that you can be more fully present with them. And let them know that while it might feel like a paradox, that the more space or separation they give, the more you can actually be with them. And you might invite them to all sit or stand nearby to watch and witness this meditation. Or you can allow them to be elsewhere if they want to be. But just let them all know that this is a meditation practice that will allow for more regular contact with you should you decide to adopt a practice like this. And if your parts are unable to step back for this meditation, just be with them however you can be and see what they need from you. But if they did create space and you feel like you're in yourself, just share your open heart and extend your self-energy to all of them. And just take a few moments to feel yourself, your true self, really fully embodied in this moment. And just notice what it feels like in your body. And you might feel yourself connected to your higher power or source or or however you conceive of this and your own divinity. And just come back to your true self and notice what it feels like to be here again. The, the you that you are without your parts. And you might take a moment to do whatever feels right for you, whether it's in silence or prayer with your higher power. When you're doing this in your own meditation practice, you can add in whatever you normally do for your meditation if you wish. And when you're ready, find the part of you that you selected earlier with whom you'll spend the rest of this meditation and just make some contact with him or her. And share your open, compassionate heart with this part. Some parts like just being with you and no conversation and others like dialogue. So for those that like some conversation, you might want to ask them some following questions if it feels right. How are you and how have you been since we last spoke?
What do you want to tell me or what do you want me to tell you about what's happening in our life right now? And is there anything you need? So just take some time reconnecting with this part of you, seeing what they want you to know, or just maybe being with them however they wish. And just take maybe one more minute being in relationship with this part of you again. It may have been quite some time since the two of you have had this one-on-one time together. Just see if there's anything else they need from you or want you to share with them. And if this is a part of you that's already unburdened, if it feels authentic, you can thank him or her for everything they've done for you and your system. You might recall a past burden or the ways their actions impacted your life and your survival. You might thank them for their courage to heal. And you might recall a specific piece of an unburdening they did. And you can thank them for all the wisdom and energy he or she brings to your system. You might recall the qualities that they reclaimed that infuse your life that one unique aspect of you that they are. And you might thank them for trusting you and being exactly who they are. And you might also let them just know that you love them. And then remind them that they can contact you anytime they need. And it's best done when they come to you directly and with space so that you can actually be there with and for them. And let them know that you might be adopting this sort of practice so they'll have more time with you regularly. And then when it feels right, maybe tell them goodbye for now and stay inward. And just take another moment to feel yourself embodied. in in yourself and connected to source. You can share your gratitude if you wish. And you might also just thank all your parts for giving you the space they did. Letting them know that they can each experience this with you. And if your parts did not allow for more space at this time, 
Let them know that you and your therapist, if needed, can tend to their needs and concerns. And remind them that you might adopt this practice or co-create your own. And that you look forward to time with each of them. And then in your own timing, just begin to come back into your room where you're at. And then we'll just, maybe I'll invite Tammy to share how that was for you before we dive into the hows and details of all that. If you feel like sharing. Yeah, I can share. So I checked in with the part that I said that I worked with yesterday. And uh, as we were talking earlier, I realized that we did not give up her. We didn't do all the rituals, like the ritual of giving up something to the elements. And so I went to where she, where she is. She was retrieved to Splash Mountain <laughs> in Disney World <laughs> with the like um, the Brer Rabbit. So she's on the swing set at the end when they're singing zippity doo da and there's everyone singing <laughs> nice. and there's all these sort of like cartoony things happening and she's part of that. So she's, you know, has a place of belonging and just amazing place. So I went and um, just kind of hung out with her a little bit. She placed some of the things that she's been holding on to into the water and let it go out. So that was really great. But there was also this part of me that was like, you know, you're kind of working right now, so don't get too caught up in this meditation. <laughs> like, right. you know, you need to like keep, <laughs> you can't just say like, thanks, Michelle, see you later, and then go like lay down. So there was this like awareness yeah, and then I think that then the cartoon character was a little bit like, I'm fine, like just go do <laughs> <laughs> finish this interview. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and the other thing I noticed in my body is I'm like I'm leaning forward a little bit. And the more the meditation went, the more actually my back is actually hitting the back of my chair. Like I I kept just leaning back, leaning back. I probably leaned back three times until I hit the back of my chair. And then I was like, oh, wow, I didn't even realize I was that forward. So yeah. and I also noticed my body feels like it's taking up a little more room. Like I think I always try to make myself smaller. And so I've got my like, my arms are a little more spread out and I'm just kind of like hanging out in this chair. I'm fully in this chair. Mm, great. Yeah, so that's that was that's how I am. That's how that was for me. Mhm. Mm so it sounds like a little bit more embodied and noticing the part that came in about, yeah, you're working here. <laughs> but also one of the this is great that this came up for your meditation because one of the things that is really helpful in these um when you create a daily practice like this is yeah, your parts can let you know when, when there's been something missing. So it sounds like there was a piece of the unburdening that didn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. So we get to do that in our, or we have that opportunity where we can do that in this meditation. Well, one of the things you've said a couple of times is, you know, this work doesn't just happy, happen in a therapy session. Mm -hmm. And so it really is like a part of it happens in the therapy session, but then a lot of work needs to happen outside of that. Yeah. And it's certainly a lot of these tools are really helpful for the organizing and analytic, analytical type parts, right? To kind of put the pieces together as they like to do. And they have a hard time sometimes in sessions giving space. So that when they know that, oh, between sessions, we have all these different things we can utilize, that's great. And then for the meditation itself, yeah, we can do whether it's completing an, an unburdening or more of the witnessing that maybe we had to stop during our session and we didn't get all the witnessing yet in a in a meditation you can go in and connect again with the part and really get everything else it wants you to know
Um, I was curious if you were going to connect with um, one of your old timers because I've, I've had people in my workshops connect with a part that they hadn't been with in a long time. And they said, oh, you know, I didn't think I would remember some of these things about them, but the part was right there and I could connect with it and I could totally remember everything he or she unburdened, right? But I have had a couple people in workshops complete unburdenings during the meditation. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And I think I, I was a little short with the meditation today just for purposes of, I guess I'm just saying when you're doing your own meditation on your own, time constraints are your own. So sometimes they can be just as little as a five or 10 minute check-in or sometimes they can be a half an hour or an hour if you want to do some of that deeper work. So let's talk a little bit about the elements that are present in this daily parts meditation practice. Yeah. So before, I'll just say everyone is totally welcome to customize your meditation to whatever feels right for you. But for me, when I was, I guess, um, didn't really necessarily know I was creating a meditation practice, but this is kind of just an organic flow for me. And, you know, I do get comments, like, oh, your book is so organized. <laughs> like, are you that organized all the time? I'm like, no, it just kind of like this just happens. So as far as the meditation goes, this kind of speaks to one of Dick's meditations of the path uh, meditation of, you know, noticing your parts, but getting some space for them. So the first step for me is just seeing who's there. You know, we often are just, our minds are busy different thoughts and feelings and tasks are right at hand. And so we just kind of want to witness that. And then also invite in everybody, because not only do we want to have the ones that are most active at the moment to see this meditation, but everybody to see it. And then the next step would be just assessing what your parts need in order to give you that space, right? So sometimes there might be a little dialogue about like in your case, well, you're working, you know, we can't do this meditation in full right now. So you might have some sort of inner dialogue about what your parts need. You know, it might be, oh, you know, we can only do 10 minutes today, please set the, the timer, right? Whatever your parts are needing in order to, for them to feel comfortable to give you that space so that you can be embodying self. And if your parts did give space, the next step would be just to really in my book, I say it's deepening your sense of self and source. And I don't necessarily need to think of it in terms of deepening, but just really being there, noticing what it's like again, when we're not blended with our parts, how does it feel in our body? How connected do we feel to the higher self or to the collection of parts that are watching this? Um, I loved that. You, there was, you said that a couple of times, and I think that's one of the things that I learned in my level one that really has helped me is I really know what it feels like to be in self. Mm -hmm. So if I know what it feels like to be in self, then I'm aware when, I'm at, when I am and I'm aware when I'm not. Uh, yeah. And I think that's something that was, you said several times, I just notice what that's like or notice what that feels like. And I think that's one of the like, first things that new people new to IFS really need to like get and practice is this idea of like what does it feel like what what is the experience like of being in self right yeah and that noticing itself right no matter at what point of your day or if it's in a meditation wow, okay, there's a part or a collection of parts. I don't feel that self-energy. I, I, it just feels different. Yeah. And so you can only imagine if you're doing this daily, how really to me, especially after the system becomes at least significantly unburdened, it's almost like self is default. Mm -hmm. You just really walk through life more and more in self and you're like, oh, wow, a part has joined in, you know, and I'm really quite aware of that. And when you speak of that practice, I like to think of it not, you know, some people think, oh, how do we, how do we practice being in self or how do we um, build self? And that's something that's 
I think different than really any other model around is that we don't have to do that, right? It's a constraint releasing. The self is already present. We don't have to build it or manufacture it. And so for me, the practice piece of this is it's our parts practicing every day to give space, right? No matter if it's one or two steps back from Tammy, or maybe it's they're checked out and they're just having a great time on their beach or at Splash Mountain or whatever it is. And they're kind of keeping an eye on the meditation going, yeah, great. This other part's having time with Tammy right now. So it's that practice of our parts really going, it's, it's safe right now. You know, we've got this time. I'm going to really step back and let self be here. Um, so after we spend some time just embodying our own self, uh, self energy, then we can connect with a part, what I call a part of the day. And I don't think we'll maybe go into that in here, but in my book, there's kind of different ways in which you can choose a part of the day. But um, to me, it's been important to have a part of the day somehow fairly chosen so that, you know, through the course of a month or a year or whatever it is, there's a, a fair amount of time that they get. It's almost like, you know, when I was little, we used to have um, a principal lunch day and we all got got excited oh today's our principal lunch day you know um and i think our my parts at least are like oh good i get to be with michelle today and they want to have it you know fairly fair but so once you're there you can just ask some questions and of course self will kind of lead that or the parts might want to just engage with letting you know what's happening in your life through my six years of now doing this daily parts meditation practices, I've seen that there are certain parts of my system who are keenly aware of certain aspects or um, facets of my life and others who really could give a, you know, whatever. They don't really care. And had I not been engaging with my parts regularly, I wouldn't have had that awareness. Yeah, so spend some time with this part again. And then at the end of that, I always like to have a nice closing, especially for unburdened parts of, you know, just recounting again some of their burdens and what they've unburdened, their reclaimed qualities, what they've done for you, their roles. Some of that just is spontaneous. And sometimes people do like to reference their parts cards for this initially, just to go, oh, yeah, you know, this, these were the, the key burdens or or here's the uh, retrieved qualities that they are re reclaimed qualities. But I find that when you're with the part, they'll let you know, <laughs> they're like, yeah, this was the biggie, or, you know, these are the most important ones. And this is what I do for you now. You know, this is how I bring my energy or my skills to you. And just to really honor that. And then close. And I like to just let everybody know, yep, I'm here. You get your time tomorrow. One thing I will say is I also like to encourage, you know, sharing of the day. So you may have selected part X or Y, and they'll have their time with you in meditation, but something big might be up for another part. And so sometimes you can, sh or my parts at least, have been very cooperative around sharing the time. Like they'll be like, yeah, you know, we can let her go first, and then I'll have my time, or I'll be real quick, and she can have her time. That way they don't have to necessarily wait for whatever your selection method is for your part of the day. That makes sense. That makes sense because it could be like um, there's other things, something bigger is happening today or the parts activated because of something that's, yeah. That exactly. Yeah. Whatever's happening in our external world that will like say, hey, this needs to, this can't wait for another week or, you know, till next time I'm chosen. I need to tell you about this now or I need your help with this. Yeah. It's kind of reminding me of when I first started working with my, I call her my clipboard manager. What I quickly learned is I need her. And it, it's like this, 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 pra like where I'm going with this is this practice can seem, I think I even said to you, very like kind of manager run. Like I think for me, I'm like, okay, now I'm going to do this, 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 this. There's a structure, but then there's all this flexibility in that structure. And I think what I've learned about like for my clipboard manager is I need her and I just need her not to be as rigid. But yeah. I need her to help me organize my life. I, I need her help. 
and so I think that's that was one of the first parts I worked with that I was like, oh, I still need this part's help. <laughs> right, right. I don't even yeah. yelling at me all the time, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. We talk about self leadership, and I know along at some point in the early days with my IFS work, I had this notion: oh, the goal is to be in self all the time. And it's so, it's so not that, right? Yes. Yeah, I and we that do too. need our parts. Yeah, yeah, we do need our parts yeah. to, to function in this world. They're, they're the ego, right? We're, we're here in this physical form and we have these different tasks and functions we have to do. So when they're unburdened and then their preferred roles, it's the most ideal. You know? well, just like you said, right, the one part that was like the judge and now it's the wisdom. The part doesn't go away. And I think a lot of people, when you're new to IFS, you assume oh, we get rid of that part, or I don't want to get rid of that part. And it's like, no, we're not trying to get rid of that part. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So. So I like the like flexibility in the structure of the daily meditation practice. And I also love that you're like, it could be five minutes or it could be two hours. Mm -hmm. It really could, it could be any of those things. Yeah. Yeah. Some days for me, um, it, you know, depending on what I've got going. I, I, mine's always first thing in the morning. So some days there's something that I had to schedule earlier than my normal, right? So that, that meditation might be cut short. Um, but some days where a part needs something more, it will be longer. And, and sometimes it might be, wow, the system, what I'm working with right now internally is because my parts have been unburdened for quite a while, actually a number of them, um, is that when I invite them to step back and give me space, they're now connecting with their own self energy also in addition to me. So it's almost, it's that fractal nature of parts have self parts and, you know, don't go down that rabbit hole too far. Otherwise yeah, you're like, gonna, your head's going to spin, but yeah. they, they <laughs> are also, you know, really sinking into their own self energy as well. So yeah, um, it's been a, a lovely, just natural, I think natural evolution, maybe it's not something I manufactured. It's just something that's been showing up like this meditation practice, right? <laughs> right. Like this whole book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The last thing I just want to say about the meditation practice itself is not only does it just deepen our relationship with our parts, but it also can deepen the relationships of parts themselves. Like, like I said, when they're sharing their days together and such, their own relationships grow or expand, if you will. And it's also, you know, Dick talks about us being our primary caregivers. It's, it's really that it becomes us um, really embodying being that primary caregiver to our parts which is something most of us didn't get from our parents to begin with. So uh, with a daily practice, that really just becomes, at least for me and some, uh, some of my clients who do a regular practice, it becomes default, right? So you're always present for your parts. I mean, that sounds like amazing that self as def- default would be, that's healing, right? It's, it's healing. Yeah. And I, to me, IFS has been one of those um, tools of enlightenment, which I never thought about until it kind of dawned on me one day, wow, I'm feeling pretty clear, you know, pretty clean. <laughs> and, you know, it's taken me a long, long time, and I had a lot of junk to go through to get there. Um, but I do think that the more the, the system's unburdened and the more there's a regular practice, of being with our parts self does become mostly a default place uh, where we can reside or live our life from certainly yeah like you said we need our clipboard manager parts and we're our all our parts right they still do our help us with our functions day to day but to be led from this other place too concurrently i guess um, and one of the things I like to talk about also in my workshops is, you know, we talk about the, the eight C's and the five P's. And when I was writing my book, I was just checking in with my parts about their, their time with the uh, meditation and their, their relationships with one another. And they came up 
with their own six C's, which is com um, sorry, camaraderie, collaboration, community, compatibility, contribution, and compliance with contradiction, which would be like another way of saying um, agree to disagree. So there's just a lot of those other kind of C words in addition to their own self energy C words that kind of flow through the system as, as it becomes more and more unburdened. I yeah. love those. And I'm like, those are not the normal C words. And even when we start thinking of the C words, those aren't the ones that come up. That's, that's great. I no. It, well, and I think partly because these are, these come from parts, right? They, they're action oriented or they, they have things to give for us to do in our life and they can bring that camaraderie or that com, um, collaboration and sense of community or contributing. Yeah. I so I that. think that's, that's kind of maybe where I would end with my book and all of that of the hope merchanting of what systems can look like as they get more and more unburdened and have that connection. I'm wanting to like leave my house right now and go to my office and get my cards, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm not going to do right now, but maybe in the morning. <laughs> hmm. So yeah. actually that brings up one thing. We've been mostly speaking about this as far as personal use with um, uh, of the six tools for our own personal work, but it, there are many of these tools that practitioners or therapists can use certainly for their own systems, but also with their clients. And when you talk about having your parts cards at your office, I highly recommend therapists and practitioners to have either their parts cards or their par parts externalizations at their office, or at least an image of that so that, you know, when different parts of them come up during sessions, they can hold it or look at it and just say, you know, I'm right here and I'm going to talk with you after this session if you can give me some space. So it, it can be another way to, for therapist parts to kind of be acknowledged and then, you know, reminded that, yeah, you'll connect with them later. So it's nice to hear that you have your cards at your office. And it's funny when you said that, I was like, why are they at my office? Like, why wouldn't they be at home? But I feel like that's where, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I feel like I probably meditate more in my office once I'm home. I'm spazzy mom. <laughs> right I'm mean, roll so yeah, yeah. but Good. no and I also track my parts better when I'm at my office when I'm with clients I definitely track track my therapist parts and mm -hmm. I'm way more attuned to what's happening inside of me when I'm when I'm at work yeah when great I'm at my office you know what I mean yeah yeah good okay so tell me yeah. about the workshops. Great. So I offer um, customized workshops. So if people want me to come do workshops with or for them, they get to choose which of the six tools they want to investigate or work with and play around with. Uh, I do day long or weekend long workshops. I primarily have given them for, you know, the therapists and practitioners, although um, I do them also for just a, a group of clients. I recently did one for an incest survivors group. Yeah, so essentially the sky's the limit for whatever you'd like to, to dive in and explore, you get to pick. And um, right now I'm putting together a five-day intensive retreat down in Puerto Vallarta in November, November 11th through 16th. So it's a time for you to come down and be in the warm heat uh, during the winter months and really dive into all these tools for yourself. And if you're a therapist or a practitioner to be able to take back with you um, and customize and use them with your clients to whatever works for you and them. And, and that particular retreat will cover all of the tools and we'll go really deep. Um, there'll be demos, live, uh, a demo every day and plenty of time between the morning and afternoon sessions for you to either go off on an excursion of your own or just to kick back and relax or to dive in and write your biographies or make your map or whatever you're wanting to do just to maybe surf the internet and find those images or look on Etsy, you know, this, these things that we don't have time for in our day-to-day -day life. You've got a good three hours between morning and afternoon session. I've kind of, I'm so 
framed by the Esalen style with Dick. I've been with him for 11 years or 11 sessions down there and I like how they break it up. So I've got a morning segment, an afternoon of plenty of time on our own and then an afternoon of to get, um, being together. So that sounds oh. wonderful. And can we find that on your website? Yes. You'll look for that on my website under the drop down of daily parts meditation. And then there's another drop down for retreats. Great. Early bird expires on Mon- um, Sunday, but for those who are listening now, and if, if this isn't on until then, um, I might be flexible. So <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then what about, are you doing something online? I'm trying to put together an online workshop and um, my, my non tech savvy parts. Um, I, none of my parts are tech savvy. So that's my my um, piece I'm running up against, but it, there will eventually be an online workshop. And um, other things that are coming um, is I've got some new parts catalog card notepads coming. I'm doing a, a workshop at the conference this year, um, collaborating with a colleague Stan Einhorn with his. Um, internal collective unburdening process, utilizing my tools with his process. And so at the conference, these notes pads will be available, which includes a portion on there where you can start writing down if it's an internal collective unburden. And those note pads should be available hopefully in about a month on my website. The other thing that will be coming probably by the end of summer is a collection of daily parts meditation meditation. So I'm thinking there's probably five or six of them that will be recorded, hopefully downloadable off the, um, my website. That sounds very techie. <laughs> That's going to be a technological feat. <laughs> yeah. I can get, I can definitely get them recorded. It's a matter of, yeah, this whole piece, um, yeah. with the website, but yeah, that'll come. So those are the things that are coming. That is a point. lot of exciting things. Plus the book slash movie. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And then the other big thing that you do that I want to talk a little bit about is the work with the foundation. I'm the editor of Outlook. So those of you who are in the IFS community will have at some point maybe seen Outlook, whether it's through emails or if you've been at the conference. Um, it's our, um, we've now graduated from a, a newsletter to a, an official magazine. Uh, we started with 12 pages and now it's 48. So uh, lots okay. and lots of like current things that is happening in IFS both within psychotherapy and outside of psychotherapy. So um, I spent a lot of time on that. Um, right now I'm in headlong into a double-sized edition in half the length of time <laughs> just to get it ready for the conference. And in that we'll have hopefully um, a nice special insert because it's our 10th edition for um, 10 Stories of Transformation where we're going to highlight people's, you know, personal transformative experiences through IFS because they're pretty expensive to make, right? I'm imagining. Um, on, only certain um, level donors will receive a physical copy. Okay. So if you're a, a donor of over $250 at some point in your lifetime um, with the foundation, you'll get to have a copy. But everybody who signed up to be a foundation friend will also get it. But then we've partnered with CSL and I want to take a little bit of time in a minute with this, but um, we've partnered with CSL and they also send the, the digital form out through all of their constituents too. So um, most people don't know that the foundation and CSL are two separate and very distinct organizations. And I've been working hard in the last year and a half to help, the community understand that, but CSL is a training branch and they're the original, you know, Dick started CSL. Um, they train everybody and they run all the online courses and everything, all the trainings. And then about five or six years ago, the foundation was started and it's a nonprofit. And we fund the research that um, gave us our NREP 
uh, designation of um, evidence-based. We are also doing all kinds of projects. I'll just let you know a couple of them. We've got an IFS in schools project that finished up last year into um, schools in Minneapolis, Minnesota, with teachers utilizing IFS primarily for themselves and seeing how that affected their classrooms. But now we're just now beginning to go into phase two um, with more schools. Uh, we also, of course, are gathering funds for more empirical research. And we have a Take 5 program that involves the Disney Pixar movie Inside Out, where we're engaging with either athletes or some sort of celebrity who will share with us, you know, one of their moments maybe on the field or somewhere in their life where they've just blown it and a part's taken over and how they got back to their self. So yeah, it's going to be a big project. I, we have talk about big dreams of my memoir becoming a movie. We have big dreams of at some point in history, you know, during the Super Bowl, having a, an IFS commercial where some big movie star or celebrity says, look, this is what happened to me and here's how I'm different and this is why. So, but you know, of course, to do all this, we, we need everyone's time and money and donations. So if you're ever so inclined to look up the foundation, uh, what is our website? <laughs> foundation.org, I believe. Foundationifs.org. I should know that. I type it out 5,000 <laughs> times. Foundationifs.org. And is the foundation really just called the foundation? We are. We're called the foundation okay. for self-leadership. Yeah. Okay. I did not know that that was different than CSL. I thought it was all the same. You're, you're among many people. Yeah. So Ethan, I've heard some trainers didn't know the difference, um, <gasps> which, you know, it, it makes some sense on some levels. And then on another level, it's, we try, we've tried hard to distinguish ourselves. Well, and it's, I'm glad you're telling us because it's also really exciting, like, because it's like the, it's not just about IFS. I mean, not just about therapy and like learning this as this is how we do therapy. I remember in, I think it was my level two, one of the trainers said, you know, it's really a, it's a way of life. It isn't about, this is a model of therapy that I now use it's a way of life. And I think that's what you're saying, the foundation with the research and all these different branches. And even that idea of IFS as a tool of enlightenment, if mindfulness is a way of life now, nowadays, right? Like everyone's yeah. mindful in or we're practicing it or whatever, <laughs> you know, then why couldn't the idea of parts and, you know, I had, you know, I was NFL athlete and I was angry and you know, an angry part took over and just having that, you know, why can't the athletes have that dialogue? Exactly. Fascinating. So the best way to understand or hear more about what the foundation is doing is the website and the, the magazine. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, and if you're interested, if you're not, if you're either, if you're not sure if you're on our mailing list or if you want to be on the mailing list, just go to the foundation ifs.org. You'll see a drop down button uh, maybe it says donate or something. There's a whole bunch of drop downs under there, but one of them is um, join the join the movement, and you can just type in your address and your uh, email and your name, and then we'll you'll be put on the list. So perfect. The next Great. the next the next outlook will go out just a, a few days before the conference. Okay. In September. Great, and then it sounds like you'll have a lot of your tools ready for the conference too. Even your your meditations and stuff, right? I'm hoping to get the meditations done. That one might be a stretch, but definitely the the parts cards with with um, having Outlook on my plate, the meditation CD might have to wait till not this conference, but after it. Okay. And then, oh, in addition to my own workshops, I'm also starting IFS intros here in Eugene. So. Tell me about that. <laughs> no, I won't tell you about that. This is simple. IFS intros in Eugene will be right. happening. Are you going to do, are you going to be leading them? Or are you? Yeah. 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 Myself and a, a colleague here. Great. Great. Yeah. So if you're local to Eugene or you're in that area, definitely check that out because IFS intros is not something that's a regular thing. Like usually if you want to be trained in IFS, you have to go to the level one training and it's time consuming and expensive. So. 
I think that's awesome. So if you're listening and you're in the local area, then you definitely want to check that out because that's a, a rare find. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not a training. It's an intro. So it's a good way to just touch, you know, dip your feet in the pool and say, yeah, this is something I really want to invest my time in. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, for me, and I think maybe I'll speak, I'll go ahead and speak for lots of people who do the level one. You have to do a couple things in order to make, to jump into level one. Like there's no way that you can just do that. You'd have to, yeah. And I did several things before I did I did Cape Cod and stuff like that, which was a, which was fun, but. Yeah. When you're investing that amount of time and money, you want to make sure it feels right. It's a good fit for you. I'm, I, I, I have a bias. I, of course I'm hard. I would be hard pressed me to maybe to find people who said, no, it's not worthwhile to go study and do. We've covered a lot of ground. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, I'm looking at my notes and I've got everything has been pretty much covered. So I'm um, happy to have people, especially people. Oh, here's another thing is I have two Facebook pages for people who are Facebook people. One is open to just the general public about interest in my book. And the other one is a private one. So those who are using the book or who have the book can join that where it's um, definitely for people who are wanting to ask each other questions or me questions. Um, So you can look for the DPMP on Facebook. And I'm always happy if people have my book um, to send me an email or ask a question on Facebook if they've got questions about how to use it or want to share things. I, I've gotten so many beautiful pictures of people's parts externalizations um, over the years or their soul collage externalizations that I use in workshops that they've given me permission for. And it's just lovely to see everybody else's application of it. So That's great. Can we end with with what you would be doing if you were not an IFS practitioner? Sure. Yeah, you know, I thought about that question because, um, yeah, I really hope that we'd get there. Parts of me did. It's, it's the parts that were excited about that. That's the thing. So I think that all of these options that I would be doing all have something to do with IFS anyway, but it depends on which part you ask. That's what they want to do to know. Depends okay. on who's, who's, who's going to answer the question. So some of them offer up this. The traveling Wilburys group of me say that they would love to be traveling more, whether it's Hawaii or Africa or India or anywhere else. Joanne and Hannah, two of my um, younger parts, would like to be at the beach and writing. Ariadne, who actually wrote the book, she would like to be doing more workshops on the book and more intros. And then uh, Demetria, she um, would like to just be a couch potato half the time and the other half the time do more soul collage. By answering it that way, you're demonstrating to us what, that you practice what you preach because you are connecting with these named parts and they all have different ideas of what they would do if you weren't doing IFS if you weren't doing what you're doing. And I, I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could have gone down the list. Oh, that's one other thing I encourage people to do is make a bucket list with your parts. Because mm-hmm. they, each, they each have like something like, yeah, dang, I want to do this before we die, you know? I love it. And so this kind of flows in with that. You know, if I weren't doing this job or in my spare time, if I had more time, Who's going to show up and what would they like to do? Right. And if, and if you're not having a practice, if you haven't done these steps and you're not having a, a, a regular practice, then you're not going to be able to get that information. And then you're not, Yeah. And then if, if, the goal, if the goal is to, one of the goals is to live, if self is, is the default, then none of that can happen if you're not having that communication with those parts. Right, right. They're all going to be vying for who's going to be taking over in the moment, whether they're burdened or not, right? Because they all have something valuable to give us. 
Right. And um, having those regular relationships, you get to know, you know, when we talk about therapist burnout and stuff, it's because, you know, our therapist parts are doing the work so much, right? But when they step back and let self do it, we don't have therapist burnout. What I've noticed mm-hmm. is I don't have burnout. I have parts that feel like I need a break because I want to go and do, yeah, I want to go travel or I want to go do soul collage or I want to just veg out on the couch, right? Yes. It's, it's that they don't get enough time in my day to do what they want to do. And so it's being mindful of, yeah, what other things do our parts want us to do? Or how well, do we want to engage in the world? Yeah. And that feels so different than burnout, right? The, it's the, so different. Yeah. So different. Michelle, it is so good to talk to you and to see your face. And I, I'm going to be at the conference. I just bought my plane ticket. So Excellent. I will come find you. Great. I will look forward to seeing you again. Yes. It's, always, it's, it's always such a homecoming there. Thanks for inviting me, Tammy. Thanks for hanging out today. If you like this episode, make sure you subscribe. And if you really like this episode, share it with a friend and leave a review. You can follow me on Instagram at IFS Tammy and join our community on Facebook at the One Inside Podcast. Talk to you next time.